Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In the last episode, I showed you a cool new package, or at least new to me, uh, called profviz, uh, with an S at the end, not a Z. Anyway, the profviz function from that package will profile your code and tell you where it's spending the most amount of time. We use that to find bottlenecks in our code as it came to classifying our sequences. This got me thinking, well, what about other parts of my vignette where I'm kind of building out this phylotyper package? And I'm thinking about the part where we build the database. Currently, it takes about nine or 10 seconds to build the database. My experience in writing the same code or the same type of code in C++ is that it kind of takes a few seconds. It takes a bit of time. But I'm wondering if we might be able to use the profviz function also on our database building um, functions to perhaps remove some bottlenecks. Along the way, I do plan on going over to Stack Overflow to see if we can get some answers. And I'm going to do that <laughs> uh, to help myself, to help myself with this project, but also to help you to see how you can use the tremendous resources available at Stack Overflow to adapt to your own code. And along the way, we'll learn a little bit about dividing a matrix by a vector. Let's head over to our studio and we'll get going with today's episode. As usual, if you wanna get the code that I'm starting with, down below in the description to this episode, you can find links to GitHub, uh, to the repository as it currently is, as well as what it will look like at the end of the episode. Um, here we are in my home directory for this Phylotyper R package. Again, this package will classify sequences. Please, please don't go if that doesn't mean anything to you. I think you'll still learn a lot from today's episode. In my benchmarking directory here, I have a variety of benchmarking tests I also have a vignette that perhaps one day will become something of an article for thinking about how you might use the code or the functions available in the Phylotyper package to classify your own sequences. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and load um, the different elements of this um, vignette, and I will go ahead and load these. And basically what I'm doing as I go through this is loading uh, reference data that will go into the database. And before I build the Kamer database here on line 22, I of course need to make sure that I've got um, the package loaded so I have access to those functions. And so this step takes about nine or 10 seconds to run as we'll see here. And let's go ahead and use profviz to go ahead and profile the function to see where it's spending the most amount of time. So we'll do profviz colon colon profviz. Um, and the argument that we'll give to profviz is our, our basically lines 23 through 25. Oh, and I misspelled, got the V. And so as we see, it's taking 9,390 milliseconds or about 9.4 uh, seconds. And so we can see that the first 3,000 milliseconds or three seconds are spent processing our sequences into KMERS. And then we see the last 6,000 or so seconds are spent calculating the genus conditional probability. And we see that this T function for transpose comes up a fair number of times. And then the last step is um, calculating the log. And sorry, this pop-up keeps showing up here, but we can see that the log, the outer function on my line 123 up at the top here is taking up you know, maybe three fourths of a second or so. Um, and so some of these others um, rectangles that we see here are all related to the transpose and probably different operations that are happening within the transpose. So these transposes are taking a lot of time. And so again, why are we using these transposes? So if we look at line 23 here, what we see is within it, we have the genus count. So the genus count is the number of times each kamer, we're using a kamer based approach, the number of times each kamer shows up in that genus within our database. And we're adding to that then the word specific prior. So if you look at all the sequences in our database, what, what frequency, what percentage of the sequences have that specific kamer? So you add those two values together and then you divide by the total number of sequences in each genus plus one, okay? And so the idea of adding the word specific prior as well as the plus one is that say a kamer doesn't show up for a genus, we don't wanna have zero over zero, right? And so uh, it's allowing some level of uncertainty uh, that we haven't sampled all of the kamers that are you know, present <laughs> in those genera of sequences. And so what we're doing is this transpose of transposes to get the division to work. So let me go ahead and open up a clean R script to kind of show you a little bit about what's happening here. 
So I'll define a variable that I'll call M and I'll say matrix, uh, let's do one to 10 and we'll then do N row equals five. And so now if we look at M, we see that is a two column matrix, right? And so we have one through five and six through 10. I'm going to have a vector uh, that I will then say is one and two. And so we can kind of think about these again as being like um, the, oh, where'd it go? We can think about this as being like the genus counts as the vector and genus count as being like the M or the genus count plus the word specific prior as being my M value, right? And so if I do M divided by V, what I expect or what I want, I guess I should say, would be one divided by one, six divided by two, two divided by one, seven divided by two and so forth, right? So it should be like, one, three, two, three and a half, three, four, four, four and a half. You get the idea, right? But when we run that, we get something different. So what's happening? Well, it's important to note that matrices in R are treated in a column-wise approach. And so what we're getting is we're taking one, two, and if we come back to this M value, we're taking one, two as a vector and we're repeating it for all elements in the matrix, right? So one, two divided by one, two will be one, one. So three, four divided by one, two will be three, two, right? And then five, six will divided by one, two will be five, three, right? Which is what we see and so forth, right? And so it's repeating, it's what's called recycling the V value over and over for all elements of the matrix, okay? And so that's not exactly what we want, <laughs> right? So if we instead did TM, then it's going to be um, transposed, right? And so now what we think about TM, say divided by V, we're gonna take t one six divided by one two to be one three, two seven divided by one two will be one three and a half and so forth, right? Um, and so sure enough, that's what we get because again, it's repeating that one two, uh, it's recycling it across our matrix. But we don't want a two row by five column matrix, we want a five row by two column matrix. So we can then retranspose the data to get back what we had expected to get, right? Where again, our M matrix was one, two, three, four, five in the first column, and then six through 10, um, but we wanted that six through 10 divided by two. And so that's what we see, right? And so we're spending a lot of time in this, and I can imagine that with a big matrix like we have, so we have basically 65,536, so that's four to the eight. That's how many rows we have, that's how many camers we have. And we have about 4,000 genera, which are the columns. So we have a 65,000 row by about 4,000 column matrix. And so transposing that back and forth, I could imagine taking a fair amount of time. So I'm curious if there's a faster way to do this. So to figure that out, I'm gonna hand it over to Google and I'll say how to uh, divide matrix by vector in R. And I think I had a misspelling here, but A, it figured it out. And so this first link in Stack Overflow, I've actually already been here. That's why it's purple. <laughs> and so we get this article in Stack Overflow. And so invariably, when we ask questions of Google, the top hits come from Stack Overflow. And so there is a bit of an art to interpreting Stack Overflow and thinking about how you apply the results from Stack Overflow to what you are trying to do, right? And so we have something very similar to what uh, we saw before, right? And so they have a matrix, they have a vector, and they want to divide the matrix by the vector. So their matrix um, repeats one for two rows and two columns. So it should be one, 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 and then divide by five and 10. And so they would expect to get 0.2 and 0.1, or actually that's not what they want. They want 0.2 and 0.1, right? And so they want to know, how do I get the right result <laughs> and without doing an R bind? Because we've seen R binds are horribly slow. And so what happens is that someone follows up. Uh, let's see, who is this? Um, Anton or G. Grothendieck. I don't know who those are. Um, but they came up with 10 different approaches to doing this type of division, which is pretty slick, right? So um, because some of these approaches might have taken a long time to run, what they did was that they repeated them for 10 replications, 10 repetitions in microbenchmark, right? So they did times equals 10. We've seen microbenchmark previously. Um, and so then they got those that were the fastest that took less than 20 milliseconds and they repeated them with 100 iterations, okay? And so they got these 
uh, six results. So the first result is what I had already done. <laughs> Pretty good for me, right? And so what I'd like to do in today's episode is take these other five approaches and see how they scale with time. So um, I'm going to go ahead and copy these into my RStudio, and we'll leave that there. And then we're going to come back to our um, code. And so we're interested in our R Kamers function. And so I'm going to look for the log function because that's a, um, a, a navigation point for me because that's the only function. Uh, this uh, calc genus conditional prob function is the only function in my code that uses the log function. And what we're worried about, again, is this line 123 and how we might go about replacing this. So I'm going to come into my vignette.r and bring this down as a copy. And we'll go ahead then and say micro benchmark on micro benchmark. And then the argument we want is times. I always forget what that's supposed to be. I'm going to do 10 instead of 100 because we know it's going to take about 10 seconds. And so that's 100 seconds. So that's about a minute and a half to run. Uh, I'm OK with sitting tight for that. And then we'll go ahead and wrap that in parenthesis. We'll go ahead and run this and see what it looks like in about 90 seconds. All right, so we get a median of 9.99, we'll say 10 seconds. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead here um, and I will say in my Kmers script, um, I'm going to come down and say transpose um, will be uh, 10 seconds. Okay. And I'll go ahead and comment that out and we'll try the next approach. I'll say 10.0 seconds just to give a little bit more precision, you know? All right, so we've already done this version. And uh, like I said, that took 10.0 10 se seconds. And so the next one is taking the matrix and multiplying it by a diagonalized matrix version of the vector. And so what this means, um, again, if we translate it to our uh, variable name, so M for our matrix, dev is V for the vector. So we're going to take V and put it under one, right? So we get one and 0.5. Again, our values are one and two, so that makes sense. And then when you diagonalize it, uh, what you get is um, one, zero, zero, 0.5, right? So the diagonal has the values. And then you do matrix multiplication times the matrix, right? And so then you get the value we would expect, right? So let's go ahead and try this version. Matrix multiplication tends to be a rather slow process. So I'm kind of curious to see how long this takes. I think in the original version, it was actually quite fast. So um, we'll, we'll go ahead and like I said, we'll, we'll give it a shot. And so again, what we're going to do is M uh, percent star percent, which is uh, matrix multiplication times the diag of one divided by the, the vector, right? And so the matrix is these two values added together. So I'll go ahead and grab the parentheses with them. And then this is the vector value. So I'll go ahead and grab that with the parentheses. And so we'll go ahead and save that and load it. I'm also going to test it to make sure everything works. It does not work, which is why it's good that we test it. And I'm realizing I forgot the log. So I'll go ahead and add the log uh, outside that. Go ahead and test it again. Good. <laughs> that passes. It's good to have these tests, right? So we can refactor the code and we can see that we're not breaking everything with our tests. So we'll call this matrix multiplication. Okay. So go ahead and save it, load it like we I think we already did. And then I'm going to go ahead and rerun the vignette. Um, first, though, I'm going to call db. I'll have db trans as db. So we'll save that. And then we'll rerun this. So this is taking a long time to run. I went ahead and hit the stop button. It's asking me if I want to terminate r. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Uh, I'm not, I've waited like five or so minutes and it, it never quite finished. Um, I don't know how long this took, this mat multi uh, version of the calculation, but it was clearly much longer than 10 seconds per iteration. I'll say forever. <laughs> and I will go ahead and comment this out. Um, I'm actually going to uncomment the previous version because I want to save it to get the, um, the value of db um, in my micro benchmark for comparing future versions. So I'm going to go ahead then and reload uh, this stuff. I'll go ahead and reload the package and then these other lines. And we'll go ahead and jump down then to micro benchmark to reload this to get DB loaded. All right. So that took 10.1 seconds. Uh, this 
other time we ran it. So uh, it's pretty much the same as what we had before. Now we're ready to skip ahead past the matrix multiplication. I'll say this took again forever. And so now we're ready to think about using sweep. Uh, sweep is a function I haven't uh, seen before. I'm curious to see what it does. So we'll do a question mark on the sweep. And so uh, return an array obtained from an input array by sweeping out a summary statistic. I feel like that is just a horrible description. So the arguments are x, margin, and stats, and fun, right? And so in ours, we have x is mat, or um, m in our case. Dev is going to be the v. This reminds me, I need to make sure these are loaded because we had to restart everything, right? And so m is x, so that's the matrix. The margin is 2, so usually rows is 1 and columns are 2. And then stats is the summary statistics, which is to be swept out. So I think that is the vector that's going to be swept across the matrix. And we're going to do it column wise, I think. And then the function is the division. So I clearly don't have a good handle on the sweep function as kind of my hedging tells you anything. But um, I have an extra comma here at the end. But it does what we want it to do. So I'm going to see how it does relative to our double transform. I'll go ahead and comment that out. And I'll call this. Uh, sweep and then our m is going to be genus count plus word specific priors and then our v is going to be the genus counts plus one i guess i don't need those parentheses around the sum uh, it probably doesn't really matter but i do need a log around the sweep um, and so we'll get that saved i'm going to go ahead and test it to see if it all works wonderful i'll go ahead and load everything and then I'll come back to my vignette and go ahead and rerun the micro benchmark. Okay, so that took about 10.2 seconds, um, a little bit slower than what we got with the transpose. Um, also, I'd be a little re reluctant to use sweep um, without fully understanding what's going on. Um, it's still, I think I kind of get it, but it just seems a little bit odd. So let's come over to our vignette and make sure that it also gives the right value. So I'll do db sweep db. And then we'll um, we'll say db underscore trans um, dollar sign conditional prob equal equal db underscore sweep dollar sign conditional prob. So the equal equal is a logical comparison. And so these are again like 65,000 by 4,000 matrices. So we're gonna get that many true or false values. So we can synthesize that using the all function. So if all of the values are true, this will return true. So hopefully that's what we get here and sure enough, we do, and that tells us that the conditional probabilities are the same whether we use that double transpose or using the sweep function. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. I'm gonna comment out this sweep approach and let's move on to the next approach, which is using the rep function. So the rep function I use a lot for building vectors. So again, we have like V and I might normally do like rep V say five and that's gonna repeat one, two, five times. So the total length then is 10. Um, and so that is the same as rep v times equals five, right? Another argument that you might see is length out. And so we could say length out equals five. And so that's gonna give us a output vector that's five units long. It's gonna repeat that one, two until it gets to five elements, which we see here. And so we see that the last value is a one because we've given it a v of two length, right? And so you can't get uh, the full length <laughs> into an odd number, which is why it leaves off that final two. Um, another useful argument that we see here is each. So we can say each equals five, and it's gonna take each element of the vector and repeat it five times. I think we can also do something kind of wild, like five comma three um, as a vector, and no, nope, it doesn't like that. I thought maybe we could change each um, value um, so that the one would be repeated five times and the two three times, but I think I was just thinking something weird in my head. So anyway, this is what we have, right? Um, and so again, if we take M and we have this vector of ones and twos, these ones are gonna be the denominator in division of the first column, and these twos are gonna be the denominator in division of column two, right? And so now when we run this, we get our favorite answer. I'm gonna copy that over to my kmers.r script. I'll call this rep, and then we're gonna to wanna to wrap this in log, right? And then we're gonna use genus count plus word specific priors for our M. And because that's the numerator, I'm gonna wrap it in parentheses. And then our vector, 
is this genus counts plus one. And that's going to be in the denominator. So I'll go ahead and save that. I'm going to test it, make sure it all works. No, we're getting errors. Why are we getting errors? Um, oh, because I didn't change the each, so n row m. And so I'm here going to put, um, this is the number of kmers. So we'll do n underscore kmers. So I'll go ahead and save and test again. That passes. I'll load it to make sure it's available to my vignette. And then I'll go ahead and run my micro benchmark and we'll see how this does compared to the other approaches. So, wow, that was really quick. <laughs> 6.2 seconds. That is fast. Wow. I'm really, I'm really surprised and impressed. Let's make sure that it does what we think it does first though. So we'll do DB underscore rep um, uh, DB. And then I'll copy this all statement down. And instead of DB sweep, we'll do DB rep. Yep. That worked. All the values were the same. Cool. Uh, so I like this. <laughs> uh, again, this was 6.2 seconds. Uh, very good. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this out for now, and we'll probably come back to this in the end because that's a lot faster than what we had previously. Great. So let's come back to here. And again, we had 6.2 seconds for our timing there. Now we'll turn to these final two approaches. So again, let's swap in our variable names for Matt and dev will be v and again let's this is so again this is a function that's new to me replace so let's look at the help for replace and what we'll see is that replace replaces the values in x with indices given in list by those values given in values that doesn't really mean anything to me so we've got three values three arguments going into replace x which is a vector or a matrix again a matrix is a special type of vector a list is an index vector, so we're using true, so it's all ones, and then values are the replacement values. So I think what's happening is that we're taking TM, which is the transposed matrix, and then we're going to replace all of the values with the values in V, right? And so what we'll see as the output from replace then, yeah, so we've got one, two, um, one in the first row, two in the second row, right? And then we're going to transpose that to get it to be the same dimension as M, right? And then we're gonna divide those by each other to get the result we were expecting. Okay, so that makes sense. Even if I don't totally understand again what replace does, um, it, it kind of makes sense. So let's come back to kmers.r and we'll plop that in and we'll call this replace. And again, our uh, log function needs to wrap the whole thing. And then we'll take this as our numerator. And again, we're doing a sum, so it needs to be in parentheses. And then we don't totally care about the values in this replace argument, replace function, right? Um, instead, we want the shape. So we'll do transpose of genus count. And then V is going to be the genus counts plus one. So we'll go ahead and copy that into V. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's test it to make sure it works. Good. I'll load it for our vignette, and then I'll go ahead and rerun our micro benchmark, and we'll see how long it takes. All right, so that took 10.9 seconds. Not our fastest by any means, but hey, um, again, that's good in a way, because this replace function to me is a lot like sweep, and it doesn't totally make a lot of sense. So I'll go ahead and comment that out, but I also want to make sure that it does what we think it does. So we'll do db underscore replace, uh, equaling db, and we'll repeat this all function. All right, and test that. True, good. So um, it's a little bit bittersweet to say goodbye to all these candidates, but hey, um, it's just code. All right, so the final one we want to try is this version using a call function, which again, I hadn't heard of before. Uh, so the call function returns column indexes or indices. Um, and so returns a matrix of integers indicating the column number in a matrix like object, right? And so if we think again about Matt looking like this or M rather looking like this, and we then do call M, we then see the column that uh, the number for each of the columns, right? And imagine we could also do say row M to get the row for each row in M. So what we then get um, again, let's substitute in our values. So M for Matt, V for dev. 
So our call for M will look like this. So first column, second column, and then we'll index into that vector and we have that extra parenthesis at the end. Anyway, so now we get back a vector, right? So this is a lot like the rep function with each. And we then divide by M. And so if I had to guess, this is probably gonna be faster than some of the other options, but probably not as fast as rep because we're going through, I guess, two steps here, right? to get the same output as rep. So let's go ahead and try this and see what the timing looks like. And again, we'll come back to kmers.r and we'll then plug in our values again with the log and then our genus count plus word specific priors for the M. Again, I don't need the full addition to get the column indexes. And then our V is going to be our genus counts plus one. And so that's gonna be this, but it's gonna to have to be wrapped in parenthesis. So we'll go ahead and save this. Um, I'm gonna call this uh, the call approach. Let's go ahead and test it to make sure it works. Yep, and I'll load it for the vignette. And then let's go ahead and rerun this. All right, so yeah, I think it fell in kind of in the middle of a couple different of our options, about 8.9 seconds. So let's go ahead and throw that in here, 8.9. Um, and I'll go ahead and um, put that in here so we can kind of do an overview here in a minute. And let's go ahead and make sure that the output is what we think. So we'll do db underscore call uh, db and copying this down. So db call is true, good. So again, turning to our implementation of these different methods, we found the rep function followed by the call function, followed by the transpose were the three fastest. Uh, looking back at this person's code, we find that two, which was their matrix multiplication, was the fastest. I think that something must happen at our scale that matrix multiplication breaks down. Um, I had thought this would be the fastest, but it was clearly the slowest. Um, and that the rep function, which was number five for them, was actually one of the slower versions, right? So. I think, again, this underscores the value of doing benchmarking with data on the scale of what you're actually going to be working with, right? So if I'd have come to this Stack Overflow post and seen, oh, matrix multiplication, that's what I should do because that's the fastest based on this benchmarking, uh, I would be wrong. <laughs> and we might still be waiting for it to complete on our rather large data set. Whereas what we found um, using, um, again, the rep and the... Um, the call function, actually the call function did pretty well in their hands, um, but yeah, the, 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 the rep, the 17.8 seconds, uh, did much better in our hands. Again, I hope this is interesting for thinking through how you can take code that you find on a site like Stack Overflow or RStudio or Posits um, community forums and thinking about how you can adapt it for your own uses. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment out this final option using the call function and I'm going to reveal uh, this rep version of the function. And I'll go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and test it just to double check. That's great. We'll go ahead and load it. And then coming back to our vignette, I will go ahead here and I will remove our micro benchmarking. And let's go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and profile it one more time to see how it performs relative to what we had previously done with that double transpose. All right, so we see again, 6,400 milliseconds, very fast. And again, this first 3,000 or so milliseconds um, was part of the Kmer database, but it's really the detect Kmers across sequences. And so uh, this was a lot of string manipulation as we saw a few episodes back. And then we um, got into calculating the genus conditional probability that we saw here, right? And so what we're finding then um, is that, let's see, yeah, so we're spending a lot less time now in this log function and that we're, I guess, starting here um, with the addition, <laughs> right? Um, that we see on that first part of line 133 up on the top. And then here, um, this is, yeah, it's kind of nondescript calc genus conditional prob. And so, yeah, this is a bit nondescript of exactly what it's spending its time doing in these steps but it no doubt relates to perhaps something um, with the log uh, and we see a division here. So anyway, we see that again, 
um, that a lot of time is being spent in the calc genus conditional prob, and but it's a lot less than what we previously had, right? We, we trimmed about three and a half seconds, which again, on the grand scheme of things, isn't huge. We're still gonna be waiting for six and a half seconds to build the database, but um, I'm happy with it. And again, along the way of our process of learning how to um, you know, benchmark and try to improve the performance of our code, we got exposed to a few other functions, things like rep, call, uh, sweep, replace again sweep and replace i'm not i'm still a little fuzzy on i'll have to perhaps do some more digging and research on those but certainly the rep function is a standard tool that i use a lot um, and the call function was also pretty interesting to see as well this is going to be a good stopping place for today one last bit of process improvements performance improvement that i'd like to look at is seeing if we can do this step that we've talked about here in kamers um, the calc genus conditional prop. I'm curious if we can't do part of this or maybe this whole, this line 133 now in C++. So in the next episode, we are going to break out the C++ and see if we can't improve the performance of this step by writing it in C++. So that you don't miss that episode, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.